might want to thank the crayfish for that great Czech beer. A Czech beer brewery has enlisted some curious creatures to help maintain the purity of their water supply. Probitin Brewery in the Czech Republic's South Bohemian region equipped crayfish with high-tech biosensors that monitor their heartbeat and movement. The crayfish were placed in tanks, which were pumped with water from the same natural spring source the brewery uses to make its beers. Crayfish are able to detect pollutants or impurities in the water and react to it with changes in their body or behavior. A computer analyzes the data and flags down changes in water quality when three or more crayfish change their pulse activity, with results coming in within three minutes. Scientists at South Bohemia University have patented the water system and plan to upgrade the technology to include a special crayfish heart monitoring camera. Here's hoping that useful tech makes it to other breweries so we can have more great beer to look forward to. Bottoms up! Now this is how you turn sewage water into good times. An innovative scheme in Arizona is using recycled wastewater to brew beer. Treated wastewater is pumped into a truck fitted with state-of-the-art filtration systems. At this point, the water isn't potable and is only fit for irrigation. Inside the truck, the water undergoes reverse osmosis and is treated with ultraviolet light. A peroxide solution is then added. Finally, the water is run through a carbon filtration system to produce drinkable water. The truck will deliver the water to breweries around Arizona, which will use it to make beer. The Arizona Pure Water Brew Challenge aims to raise awareness about water issues, with beer the hook to get people interested. Well, you got our attention, so cheers to that! Belgium's Beer Pipeline Starts Pumping Belgium's Beer Pipeline officially started operating beneath the ancient city of Bruges on September 16th. The two-mile beer pipeline originates from the De Hoffman Beer Brewery in the city center of Bruges to a bottling plant out of town. Water, barley, yeast, and hops are mixed in the steel kettles at the brewery. The beer is then transported to the bottling plant directly through the pipeline. This should greatly reduce the time and work of beer tankers transporting the beer from the city center to the bottling plant. The pipeline is able to transport enough beer to fill 12,000 bottles an hour. The earliest brewing at De Hoffmann was recorded in 1564. The current owner of the brewery was advised to shut down the historical site and move the operation to an industrial setting. However, he refused the proposal in order to keep the Bruges-made beer authentic. Uber driverless truck delivers beer. A driverless Uber truck loaded with 50,000 cans of Budweiser made an 120 mile journey across Colorado last week in the first commercial shipment by a self-driving truck. Auto is Uber's self-driving truck subsidiary. Its vehicles can drive autonomously on the highway, leaving the driver free to do other tasks or relax. Auto's Volvo trucks are retrofitted with LiDAR, radar, and cameras which collect data that onboard computers translate into driving directions. The self-driving trucks maintain a safe distance from other vehicles and only change lanes when necessary. The technology only works on the highway, so drivers are still needed to navigate trickier city roads. The company believes that in future, self-driving trucks will drive on the interstate with human drivers handling the last few miles into town. Trucks haul 70% of freight in the U.S., but the industry has a shortfall of 48,000 drivers, which could reach 175,000 within 10 years. Auto hopes that driverless trucks can make up the deficit of drivers, reduce emissions, and increase efficiency. It also thinks driverless trucks will make roads safer because human error is almost always the reason behind the 400,000 truck crashes in the U.S. each year, which claim 4,000 lives. So I guess we can all drink to that.